Welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. On today's episode, we're going to talk about solar inverter sizing, specifically as it pertains to DC versus AC ratios. Furthermore, we'll get into the differences between central inverters and micro inverters. Let's get into it. So there are many different factors you should consider when sizing your solar inverter. Do you have multiple facing roof pitches, uh, shading issues? Do you have just one gigantic array facing due south and full sun? Are you thinking of installing micro inverters or are you thinking of installing a string inverter? All these different factors are going to change uh, which AC or DC to AC ratios you need specifically in your scenario. And so on-site conditions really have a lot, uh, a lot of factor in determining which DC to AC ratio is right for your specific situation. So after the video, you should be able to make an informed decision on which inverter is the right size for your specific needs. So in the solar industry, it's actually really common to have your DC array size to be significantly larger than the size of your inverter or the AC size of your system. And the reason for that, there's several reasons, but you know, it could be as, as far as just ha saving a little bit of cost on your inverter, your wires, your breakers, it could also be because of the configuration of your electrical service. So with larger inverters comes larger PV output current, which depending on your situation could mean having to conduct a service upgrade or some expensive electrical work in order to connect a larger inverter to your, your specific electrical service. So a lot of times if you can get away with a smaller inverter without much sacrifice, that can be the right choice for you. So the main issue with, with severely undersizing your solar inverter compared to the solar array is what in the solar industry is called clipping. So what happens with clipping is when the, the top of the production graph is clipped off due to the inverter being undersized. So like in this scenario uh, on this graph, say we put a 5,000 watt inverter here located on the five uh, on this 7.6 kilowatt array, the production would go up and then bam, it would flatline at five kilowatts throughout the middle couple hours of the day and go down, therefore losing all that excess potentially produced solar uh, power that, that we could have gained had the inverter been sized larger. So with one central inverter, um, you have all panels collectively producing power to the solar inverter. And so if you have multiple facing roof planes or pitches, or maybe some shading on some modules and not others during different times of the day, uh, what you'll see is your, if you have a 7,600 watt solar array, that array is never actually going to be producing 7,600 watts of DC solar power at any given time. And so a lot of times it's just not necessary to size the inverter to the solar array. Now, if everything is facing due south in full sun, you may want to reconsider that because in the middle of the day, you could potentially hit 7,600 watts during perfect conditions. And that is a nice sunny day, cool temperatures uh, at, the, at the right time of year when the sun is closest to the earth and when the angle of the sun is perpendicular to your solar panels and the azimuth of the sun is is facing the the roof pitch that your solar panels are on so let's take some uh, a look at some of these examples on the board and, and kind of go through the different scenarios so up top we have got a 7600 watt solar array with 19 400 watt solar panels a 400 watt panel is pretty normal these this day and age um, and we're having them all facing due south full sun. And so what you'll see is here with the central inverter, uh, in the morning, they'll just start producing power. And then in the middle of the day, it's going to peak for a brief moment at 7.6 or 7,600 Watts, at which point it's going to move further down. So if you had a 7,600 Watt inverter, you would not experience any clipping. And this graph is really just perfect time of year, perfect angle. Many times of year, like in the winter, or just depending on the roof plane and the azimuth of your array, 
you know, you're never going to see that, that peak at 7.6. So if it's the middle of winter, the sun's low in the sky, maybe this, this, this graph is only ever going to hit 6 anyways. But this is kind of perfect conditions, full output power of the array. So you'll see here um, with microinverters, it's a little different because you have an inverter under every single solar panel. And so, so every single solar panel can potentially get clipped uh, at any given time if the, the microinverter is not sized correctly. But again, we've got 400 watts here at the top. For this example, I used uh, Enphase IQ uh, inverters. So these are the common vo uh, wattages of each one. You got the IQ8H at 384 watts. You've got the IQ8A at 349 watts. You've got the IQ8M at 325 watts. And then you've got the IQ8 Plus at 290 watts. So with the 400 watt panel, again, perfect conditions, perfect time of year. Um, it's going to go up, it's going to spike at 400 watts, and then it's going to come back down as the sun sets. Now, again, you'll see if you undersize the microinverters, um, you're going to clip off depending on the size of your inverter, how, however much of that potentially produced solar energy you could have gained had you picked a larger microinverter. Now here on the bottom, what we can see is a, a, a mixed roof plane. So you've got, say, um, half of your panels or, or a third of your panels facing east, a third facing south, and a third facing west. Now what happens in this situation is even in perfect conditions, you're never going to hit 7.6 um, or, or, or 7,600 watts. The reason why is the east facing panels are going to start producing earlier in the day and then as the sun gets due south, the south facing panels are going to be producing. And then later in the day, those west facing panels are going to reach their highest output. And so what that essentially does is it kind of flattens that curve. Instead of spiking, it's kind of a lot more smooth of a bell curve. It comes up earlier in the morning, it's a little flatter, and it stays up a little later in the afternoon. Um, and so in this situation, you can really max out those DC to AC ratios because, you know, the solar array, even in perfect conditions, is never going to hit 7.6. The same could be thought for shading. So even if all panels were facing south, but you were going to expect some amount of shade on your array at all times of the day, all times of the year, the same would apply. The shady panels wouldn't be making so much um, you know, and, and that would move around throughout the day, depending on the site conditions. So here you'll see the, the in-phase microinverter um, example for the east, south, and west facing arrays. And what you'll see here in red, I'm showing your east facing array. Here in orange, I'm showing the west facing array. And here in green, I'm showing the south facing array. And what will happen here is your east facing panels will will produce in the morning, quicker in the morning. Um, it, and then as the sun moves throughout the day, they will drop quicker than the rest. Your south facing panels, again, will have a similar curve to everything else where they spike in the middle of the day. And your west facing panels will really wait till that afternoon before they spike and, and they will be producing the most power the latest in the day. And what you'll see is your east and west facing panels will never actually reach their full potential because the full potential is due south, solar noon, with a, a perfect angle of incidence perpendicular to your solar panels. Uh, and, and they're just never going to see that site condition. So it doesn't really matter. You can really start undersizing that microinverter without any clipping whatsoever. But what you'll see is that that south facing array, it could reach its full potential at high noon. And so Rather than being able to evenly distribute this power over one central inverter throughout the day um, and really go with a lower inverter, if you undersize the inverter with microinverters, you're still going to get that south facing array clipped. So again, you'll see the IQ8H here where you're only really going to clip those, 
those south facing solar panels, the IQ8A, the IQ8M, and the IQ8 Plus. It is common to use undersized microinverters compared to the solar panels, but you'll see you don't really get quite the benefits that you do with one central inverter and being able to really undersize that inverter um, when you have multiple facing roof lanes. So in the first example, we've got a 7,600 watt array with a 7,600 watt inverter. That is a one to one DC to AC ratio. And you'll see with that, with that setup, full south, full sun, the, the inverter is never going to clip any power whatsoever. Um, it, it's just never going to get above the nameplate of the inverter. And then sometimes a year, it's never going to get close to the nameplate. Next, we'll look at the 7,600 watt array with a 6,000 watt inverter. Now that's a 1.26 DC to AC ratio. And that, that's a pretty normal um, DC to AC ratio in the solar industry. It's very common for a 1.2, 1.25 DC to AC ratio. And in most times a year, you're not gonna experience any clipping whatsoever. And then in the, the perfect time of year, if you have a full sun south facing array, it's really just gonna clip off the top of the graph, you know, a couple months out of the year during high noon. And over the, the lifetime of the system, that generally only equates to like a one to 2% efficiency loss. Now with, uh, for the next example, we're gonna have a 7,600 watt array with a 5,000 watt inverter. And you'll see that really does start clipping quite a bit of potential solar production. And uh, that's, that's a 1.52 DC to AC ratio. And that's really pushing the limits um, in, in some cases, some inverters won't even allow that DC to AC ratio, but the ones that do, you're going to often see uh, excessive amounts of clipping. And in my opinion, that high of a DC to AC ratio is really not acceptable unless, again, you have lots of shade or lots of different facing roof planes. So another argument for undersizing your solar inverter is that, you know, solar panels over time do lose uh, efficiency. So you know, they'll get soiled where they'll get grit and grime on them. They lose 2% generally in the first year, depending on the solar panel. Uh, the average solar panel after that starts losing maybe around 1% a year. So, so really, um, even if you sort of undersize your inverter to begin with, as that system matures 10, 15, 20 years into its life, those inverters might be size perfect and you might not experience any clipping. So a lot of people will say that upfront investment in a larger inverter over time is not actually really worth that additional investment because over the lifetime of the system, you're not really experiencing that much clipping losses, even if in year one and year two, you are seeing significant clipping. So if you're getting value out of today's content, do me a favor, go down in the corner of the screen there hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when I have more videos like this one. Now let's talk adding storage into the mix. Everything I've said today has really been about just a grid tied inverter um, and really AC coupled. So with, with energy storage or adding batteries for your system, um, you can store your solar power to use at a later time of day. Uh, now with an AC coupled system, that is where you have um, your output of the inverter, all solar running through your solar inverter, getting output just like in any of these scenarios that we've described, and then having your battery or your storage system have its own inverter um, where it takes that AC output, it converts it back into DC to charge your battery bank, and then it, it, that same battery inverter will then take your DC battery bank, turn it back to AC to discharge to your home's loads. So in that case, all of this still applies with an AC coupled energy storage system. You're still kind of kind of have your, your solar inverter is the single choke point where you're limited to the nameplate rating of the inverter. Now, on the other hand, with a DC coupled system, you can really uh, max out that DC to AC ratio and have a, a, an inverter, a solar inverter, much smaller than your solar array without really losing 
any potential energy or power from the solar panels at any given time. The reason is that DC coupled architecture. So with a DC coupled system, the, the DC power from the solar panels goes straight down in to charge the battery bank without having to be converted to AC. So your solar inverter, for example, can still say with, we had a 5,000 watt inverter, 7,600 watt array, um, your solar inverter, even though it was limited to 5,000 watts, that would be getting discharged to the home loads or to the grid. The excess power here would be still sent to charge the battery bank all on the DC side of the system. And so, you know, you could have a much smaller solar inverter with a DC coupled system. One good example of a common DC coupled energy storage system is your solar edge home hub inverter with the solar edge energy bank battery so so the solar edge home hub inverter has up to a 200 percent dc to ac ratio allowance which seems extremely excessive and it really is in most cases but where that really shines is they have these uh solar edge smart ev chargers that can pair up with the inverter this solar edge water heater controller and things of that nature. So in that case, not only can it siphon off all that additional power to the batteries during the day, but it can also use that excess power to heat the water in your water heater or charge your electric vehicle. And so in that case, you know, you could have a, a, a 1400 watt array easily on a 7600 watt inverter. If you've got, you know, a couple batteries, a large hot water heater and your electric vehicle is sitting at home during the day when the sun is shining well you can really max out that that dc to ac ratio without wasting any power and, and that's really where the the dc coupled energy storage system shines so to summarize what we've talked about today in general you want to keep your dc to ac ratios kind of around that 1.25 range and below. That's kind of the industry standard. When it comes to central inverters, you have a little more flexibility on that DC to AC ratio, especially when you have multiple facing roof planes or shading issues or different, different pitches of roofs that will be producing at different times of the year. With microinverters, you have to be a little more careful about that DC to AC ratio because as you see, um, even if some inverters are not facing the same directions, uh, it gets clipped at the micro inverter level. Um, also, the same applies for AC coupled systems because again, all the power has to travel through that solar inverter and it's gonna get clipped if your DC to AC ratios are not cor calculated correctly. And so there are some times when you can significantly oversize your array compared to your inverter. That's going to be when there's multiple different facing roof panes, uh, shading issues, or when you're utilizing a DC coupled energy storage system. If you got value out of today's content, do me a favor, go down there, hit the like button, subscribe, press the notification bell so you can be informed when I have more videos like this one. If you're a do-it-yourselfer and you're looking for some inexpensive places to get reliable solar products, go down in the description below, check out our affiliate links. You can use those at no additional cost to you. And at the time of this video, I'm trying to negotiate some deals for my viewers. So by the time you watch this, you may be able to get a deal by clicking on those links. If you're a homeowner looking to hire someone to install solar or battery storage on your home, go down in the description below, check out that Rocky Broad solar intake form. You can just fill out a few details about yourself and your situation, and I'll get that back to you within a few days with a zero cost, pressure free quote. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, take care. Thank you.